Dan Douglas is Professor Emeritus at Iowa State University. Professor Douglas has held teaching and research appointments at the University of Khartoum, Hiroshima University, the University of Michigan, Lancaster University, and the University of London. His research specializations are language assessment and languages for specific purposes. His books include Understanding Language Testing, published by Routledge in 2010, Assessing Language Through Computer Technology, co-authored with Carol Chappell, published by Cambridge University Press 2006, and Assessing Languages for Specific Purposes, published by Cambridge University 2000. He was president of the International Language Testing Association from 2005 to 2006, and again from 2013 to 2015. He was also the editor of the journal Language Testing from 2002 to 2007. In 2019, he received the Distinguished Achievement Award sponsored by Cambridge University and the International Language Testing Association. In his talk today, Professor Douglas discusses specific purpose language ability. Specific purpose language testing has been around for quite a while, but there are some persistent problems that researchers are still trying to solve. I'll discuss three. Specificity. How specific is specific? How do we distinguish between and within domains of language in terms of the characteristics of the target language use situation? Authenticity. How do we describe the relationship between the test and non-test situations in terms of test method characteristics? and inseparability. What is the relationship between language knowledge and specific purpose background knowledge? Specific purpose language ability. Back in the year 2000 in my book I had discussed specific purpose language ability which results from the interaction between specific purpose background knowledge and language ability by means of strategic competence engaged by specific purpose input in the form of test method characteristics. I also defined a specific purpose language test as one in which the language test content and methods are derived from an analysis of the characteristics of the specific target language use situation, so that test tasks and content are authentically representative of the target situation, allowing for an interaction between the test taker's language ability and specific purpose content knowledge on the one hand and the test task on the other. The highlighted parts of these definitions are the problematic ones. So what's wrong with this picture? Potential problems with the concept of assessing specific purpose language ability are specificity, authenticity, and inseparability. In the same year, uh, Elder, Kathy Elder noted that the three principal problematic areas identified in my work and recast them as boundary issues. Boundaries between and within real-world domains of language, specificity, between the test and the non-test situation, the problem of authenticity, and between the components of ability or knowledge measured by the test, the problem of inseparability. Thankfully, Barry O'Sullivan suggested that he did not believe these are insurmountable, and we've been working on them ever since. So how have we been doing? Regarding the problem of specificity, Nock and McQueen, in their new book, on specific purpose language testing, mentioned the concept of codes of relevance, a superordinate term for all community varieties, standard varieties, lingua francas, and professional registers which may be encountered in a workplace. They provide this diagram which suggests that in the concentric circles, the innermost circle is the intra-professional register, the most uh, specific uh, register, for example, doctors talking to other doctors. Farther out, the interprofessional register is when doctors, for example, are talking to uh, uh, nurses or other professionals in the hospital. The workplace community repertoire, a little bit further out, is one in which the doctors are talking to non-medical people, for example, patients or cleaners or other people that work in the hospital or are in the hospital. The lingua franca, the outermost example, is the is the non-professional specific language 
that we use in everyday conversation, what we refer to usually as general language ability. The following table from Nock and McQueen illustrates how the Codes of Relevance diagram translates into communication tasks in four domains. For example, looking at the legal domain down on the, the left-hand column, an uh, intra-professional register might involve a solicitor writing a brief for a barrister, that is, professional writing to another professional, using very technical language. The interprofessional register is when a lawyer presents to an industry group about industry applications of a relevant area of law, still legal language, but couched in a way that uh, non-lawyers can understand. Workplace community repertoire is when uh, in a courtroom a juror listens to court proceedings. It's still legal language but cast in a way that non-legal people can understand easily. Or the lawyer and a client discussing uh, a witness statement. Uh, again, language that uh, non-lawyers can understand. Kim, uh, talking about specificity, uh, works on aviation English, and her studies highlight the specificity or unique features of radio telephony communication in aviation, for example, between a pilot and an air traffic controller, where interaction between interlocutors is never face-to-face. -face. Her studies reveal the richly context-embedded features of performance, a tacit agreement between interactants responding to and how an interactant perceives information and delivers that information to another interactant or uses the information for a following action. How such constructs can be operationalized for assessment purposes is a challenge that is yet to be addressed. The problem of authenticity uh, is one that McNamara and colleagues have studied. They note the problem of the indirectness of the inferences about candidates derived from what are apparently authentic workplace related language tests. They conclude that this is not to say we are defeated by the task of developing valid tests of LSP, language for specific purposes, but that we have a greater understanding of the complexity of the challenge and the need for collaboration among all those with a useful perspective on the domain under investigation. Elder would add indigenous assessment criteria to the notion of authenticity, criteria provided by professionals when judging other professionals' communication abilities. And Nock and McQueen also consider domain expert raters and interlocutors relevant to authenticity. So the problem of authenticity is one that is uh, being added to all the time. McNamara and colleagues uh, revealed a great diversity and complexity in the professional context in which the writing of medical referral letters, that is, letters written from one professional to another professional, and how these occurred in practice. The information that forms the basis for referral letters comes in a variety of forms and is produced by different parties and hence may not be optimally represented in the current note form prompts for writers in the test of occupational English, which uh, is one that's used in Australia and other places. The design of an LSP test, like the occupational English test, will always involve compromise, but it is important that any compromise be defensible, in the sense that it be based on knowledge sharing, reasoned argument, and negotiation with all relevant parties. Moving on to the problem of inseparability, Elder, back in 2001, suggested, should we, and indeed can we, assess the contextual features engaged in language performance independently of the language sample itself? More recently, Nock and McQueen said that test takers have shown profiles where they may have been weak linguistically, but performed well on the technical aspects of the tasks, or where they performed well language-wise, but made, in many cases, important mistakes on the professional-specific aspects of a test task. For As an example, Kim, uh, in 2018, asked the question, what aspects of professional competence contribute to effective and successful radio telephony communication in aviation? The most marked feature shared in the discussion by informants was limited background knowledge. Limited sensitivity to each other's role and tasks and failure to prioritize in eliciting information were also discussed by informants as contributing factors. 
In an example of Aviation English, an air traffic controller, in responding to a pilot's request to change a route of flight, said, OK, I understand your route of flight uh, after Kansu, after Kansu, then Golf 711 to Agiva, Alpha Golf India Victor Alpha, then Golf 721, Golf 721, then Uniform Hotel Whiskey Whiskey. The pilot responded, Roger, affirmative, in other words, saying, that's correct. The ATC, the air traffic controller, said, is that Agiva, Alpha Golf India Victor Alpha, that's right. The air traffic controller wasn't sure that he had got this information correct. The pilot says, Alpha Golf India Tango Alpha, correcting the little mistake from Victor to Tango. The air traffic controller says, OK, Alpha Golf India Tango Alpha, thank you. Now, in this example, the air traffic controller and the pilot were not following approved International Civil Aviation Organization procedure, which calls on them to read back information received. Thus, the air traffic controller gets the name of a route position wrong, Agiva rather than Agita. The pilot doesn't hear the mistake and says, affirmative. Luckily, the air traffic controller checks once more, is that Agiva? And the pilot finally corrects him. Kim's informants suggested that the air traffic controller had too little background knowledge and experience and that this was a bigger problem for communication than the pilot's limited English. Kai and Kunin in 2018 also studied the problem of inseparability. To many communicative language ability view holders, content relevant variance is a source of noise that needs to be controlled when making inferences about language ability. But the goal of Kai and Kunin's study was to examine whether content knowledge can be empirically separated from language for specific purposes, reading test performance. Recall Elder's 2001 question about this issue. Domain-specific content knowledge, in this case, refers to clinical nursing knowledge in gynecological nursing, pediatric nursing, specific basic nursing, and internal medicine nursing. Domain general content knowledge refers to clinical nursing knowledge common to the aforementioned four subjects. Kai and Kunin found supporting evidence for the long-held assumption that content knowledge is a major factor in passage effect. They argue that by deliberately ignoring the passage factors during score assignment, it is possible to exclude a portion of content-relevant information from score reporting. That is to say, the effect of content knowledge, domain-specific content knowledge, is separable. However, this would mean, in effect, that language test takers with higher content knowledge and thus higher reading test scores should be punished for performing too well by having their scores reduced. Overall, Kai and Kunin conclude that content knowledge is, in fact, inseparable from language specific for specific purpose test reading performance. Elder and colleagues studied a number of studies on inseparability. They asked the question, what do linguistically expert judges value about spoken communication in English for general or profession-specific purposes? Uh, I would just like to recall Selinker's 1979 notion of subject specialist informant procedures, which foreshadows what the non-language specialist can tell us. How might these values inform test constructs rating scales, and score interpretations in particular contexts, and the way we conceive of spoken communication in general. And they reviewed three studies to answer this question. One was uh, Kim's uh, air traffic controller pilot communication studies. Another one was John Pill's two additional uh, criteria looking at the occupational English test, and Sato's study uh, about message conveyance, comprehensibility, and ideas. In summary, all these three studies redu revealed reduced or little attention by non-language specialists to some of the linguistic categories such as accuracy, which features strongly in traditional language test rating scales, and greater emphasis on those aspects of message conveyance and interactional competence perceived as relevant to the goals of communication in each context. So in conclusion, we have to ask the question, how are we doing? 
we're making progress in understanding the nature of specificity, authenticity, and inseparability, and consequently we're making progress in understanding the relationship between context, language knowledge, and language use. Until we better understand and define the nature of language knowledge in specific contexts of use, we risk missing the target of our assessments, the measurement of specific purpose language ability.